Right now, following the indictment of five law enforcement officers on Ronald Green's death, some are saying the charges are not enough. Plus, the woman accused of poisoning her boyfriend and suspected of killing her husband learned her verdict Friday from a judge. And cleanup efforts have started in New Iberia, and there are plenty of helping hands to tackle the work. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is Pass Pa 2. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. A Louisiana civil rights organization is speaking out after five. Louisiana law enforcement officers were indicted this week for state crimes in the deadly 2019 arrest of Ronald Green. Four Louisiana State Police Troopers and a Union Parish Sheriff's Deputy were indicted on multiple charges, including negligent homicide, malfeasance in office, and obstruction of justice. New Sin Brent LaFaso spoke with an attorney for the ACLU of Louisiana, who says they should have been charged with manslaughter and should face charges for covering up the crime. Body camera video shows the officers dragging Ronald Green out of his vehicle and tasing and beating him. It's important, I think, to consider that this was a black man. And if there was a video of a bunch of black men beating a white man to death, I think the outcome would probably have been very different. You better not move. While the officers were indicted by a grand jury, one on a charge of negligent homicide, Megan Matt, an attorney with the ACLU of Louisiana, says it's not enough. Only two of the five officers have been placed on administrative leave. We are strongly urging the Louisiana State Police to terminate these officers and to decertify them immediately so that they cannot continue to um, brutalize the people of Louisiana or anywhere else. Okay, I'm scared. While Green's family wanted all officers charged with manslaughter, Matt says the indictments are a victory. It's also a historic day for Louisiana. We have seen it in Texas. We have seen it in Minnesota. We have seen it in some other places. But here in Louisiana, we have not seen officers get indicted when they murder people. Now we know that officers can be indicted on charges like this. And as we build these steps, we hope that eventually officers are given the same level of accountability as everyday citizens of Louisiana. And when they behave in these ways, that they are held accountable at the same level. And that was Britt LaFonso reporting there. Matt says this is the first step in a long march towards justice. We have an update to a story first told to you on Monday. Authorities have identified the inmate killed in the courthouse shooting. In St. Mary Parish, a 34-year-old Chad Williams of Burwood died after a struggle with St. Mary Parish Sheriff's Office Corrections Deputy. State police say Williams took the deputy's gun and shot himself. The name of the deputy involved has not yet been released. In state news, a case involving a woman accused of poisoning and killing her boyfriend wrapped up yesterday in Baton Rouge in a courtroom. Ariel Salk was at that courthouse and spoke with the victim's family. They are relieved and say this verdict was a long time coming. The trial alone was only thing taking nearly two weeks to get to this point. Hugs and tears were seen outside a Baton Rouge courthouse today after justice was served for one family. It was a sign of relief. Michelle Hale was found guilty of poisoning and killing her boyfriend, Damian Skipper, in 2015. His cousin, Michael Duran, says he's happy she can't hurt another person. It's about saving other lives. It's about we're raising awareness for this don't happen to another family. But Skipper might not have been Hale's only victim. The state was able to introduce evidence that she used the same chemical to kill her husband, Arthur Knopflin. Deborah never would have known about the murder of Damien had it not been for the work on Arthur Knopflin's case. But his body was ultimately found burned beyond recognition in 2016. Knopflin's family has been with the Skippers every step of the way. We were confident 
from day one that we would be here and would be celebrating this victory today. Hale was never charged with Knopfland's death. And while they are happy for the Skipper's family, they say now it's Knopfland's turn for justice. For us, it's not over, you know. And so this is just one step for us. And we just hope that, you know, one day we're able to say there's justice officially for him as well. We attempted to speak with Hale's attorneys, but were unable to get a comment. Reporting in Baton Rouge, Ariel Salk, KLFY News 10. A STAYING IN STATE NEWS, MORE THAN 145,000 HOUSEHOLDS WILL SEE A DECREASE IN THEIR SNAP BENEFITS. THIS IS BECAUSE THERE WAS A COST OF LIVING ADJUSTMENT TO SOCIAL SECURITY AND VETERANS BENEFITS. THE LOUISIANA DEPARTMENT OF CHILDREN AND FAMILY SERVICES SAYS THE AVERAGE REDUCTION WILL BE AROUND $50. THAT WILL START IN JANUARY. OTHER BENEFITS AFFECTED WILL BE THE FAMILY INDEPENDENCE TEMPORARY ASSISTANCE PROGRAM AND THE KINSHIP CARE SUBSIDY PROGRAM. Thursday night, Congress avoided a government shutdown by passing the short-term funding extension. Now, that won't happen until December 23rd, assuming lawmakers to pass a long-term spending bill by then. The long-term bill funds day-to-day -day government operations and is expected to include another round of military aid for Ukraine. It will also include election changes designed to prevent another January 6th-style insurrection. Some Republicans want to wait until January to pass the budget, but Republican leadership says Congress needs to pass that budget soon. If a deal cannot be reached, then it's possible a second short-term extension would be needed. Nobody's going to get everything they want, but the final product will include wins everyone can get behind, including passing the Electoral Count Act, emergency aid for Ukraine, and funding for our kids, our veterans, our small businesses, and our military families. The total cost of the long-term bill is expected to come in around at $1.7 trillion. Catholic Charities of Acadiana is taking action in their cleanup efforts in New Iberia. The devastation from the recent tornadoes to hit that area has them bringing in reinforcements from all over the country to do their part in helping get New Iberia back to normal, of course. Volunteers from Kentucky, Colorado, and Kansas took the trip down to Louisiana after hearing of the damage from the tornadoes. The Catholic Charities Disaster Relief Teams are helping pick up debris from houses damaged by the storm. Kristen Dreyer is a high school volunteer from Kansas. She understands the damage a tornado can bring to a community and says she's happy to lend a helping hand for those in need. I think that um, just having helping hands around, especially in this time of need, can really help out those people. Um, and they're all really grateful. All the people here are so awesome. And they're just really thankful because it's, you're in shock and it's just really heartbreaking for everyone. Yeah, we spoke with some residents down Bradley Lane who say they're thankful for the way Catholic Charities and the other organizations have helped their community. In Lafayette, two elderly women lost everything in a house fire Thursday afternoon, but they're still thankful to be alive, of course. Authorities say one sister was trapped inside the bedroom when a neighbor rescued her. The two sisters, Anna Solomon and Jacqueline Charles, were inside. Fire officials say Charles was in the kitchen when she noticed a fire coming from her bedroom where her sister was. Charles exited the home after alerting her sister. However, the fire spread throughout the house, leaving Solomon trapped inside. Kenneth Prejean, who lives across the street from their home, broke the window in the bedroom and got Solomon out. Banged on windows, banged on the house. You know, she responded. And I told her, come on, you have to get out. It's a fire. She said, I can't. I can't see. Too much smoke. So I said, well, back up. Broke the, broke the glass and pulled her out. Now that's a neighbor for you. The cause of that fire, of course, is under investigation. Checking in with Trevor Sonye over in the weather center. And um, chilly outside, as it should be. It's that time of year for that. But I really guess no big complaint, considering all that we've gone through this past week. 
Yeah, it's been a busy week for sure. We do still have some rainfall to contend with, mm -hmm. but it's light rainfall and no severe weather is expected today. Let's take a look at live Doppler 10 here. Notice the light showers streaming over the area. Subtropical jet stream is pretty active over the region, so we'll see a lot of cloud cover for today. That will leave temperatures pretty cool through the afternoon, and we're seeing these light showers for this morning. We may see these off and on through early afternoon. And then I think rain chances will go down for tonight as clouds will be clearing out and temperatures will be dropping. But none of this activity is heavy. It's all very light. 46 now in Lafayette, 39 in Shreveport, 44 in Opelousas, 46 in New Iberia. So it's a chilly morning as well. Here's that subtropical jet stream active right across the area. Notice all the cloud cover around and this light shower activity. More of it developing across southeastern Texas. That's why I'm saying we could see a couple of rounds of this coming in through the early afternoon hours. So temperatures not rising much for today due to the lack of sunshine. We may get into the low to mid 50s, but that would be about it. This is what it looks like on our future track model modeling through today. Notice a lot of clouds around and these light showers, especially near the coast later on this afternoon. And then clouds clearing out overnight tonight. That will lead to good radiational cooling. Temperatures dropping pretty quickly. We could be near the freezing mark tomorrow morning. In fact, temperatures rising only to the low to mid 50s this afternoon. So well below average for this time of year. And again, 32 to 33 for tomorrow. We may hit 34, 30, 35 for the coast. I'd say around 32, 33 for the I-10 corridor. Maybe a tad cooler than that further to the north. And in the mid 50s again tomorrow with mostly sunny skies. Northerly winds continuing to bring in the cooler air from the north. So as long as we see these northeasterly winds, we'll continue to see cooler than average temperatures, and that looks to hold true for tomorrow. Here's the upper level situation. Sunshine for tomorrow, but here comes our next system, and this is moving over the top of a cold air mass, so it looks like a cold rain likely on Monday. A healthy rain chance as well. Most of the area could see rainfall with that. And here comes an Arctic blast. This will be coming in Thursday afternoon and Thursday night. Look how sharp this trough is. Very strong northwesterly flow coming in on the back side of this and that drives a polar air mass right into the region and that will be reflected here in my seven day forecast. So 54 your high today. Mostly cloudy. Showers possible. North winds 8 to 16 miles per hour and that rain chance of about 20 to 30 percent. Mainly light activity. Mid 50s Sunday. Rain chance is increasing on Monday to 70 percent with a high somewhere we're in the low to mid 50s. 55 Tuesday. Some of that rain could linger through Tuesday. Sunshine Wednesday. Arctic front moves in on Thursday. A 30% chance for showers with a high near 70 degrees. And then we have that Arctic air mass moving into the area. Friday, a high of 32 degrees with a low somewhere in the lower 20s. And that's actually a blend between the GFS and the Euro model. GFS is a little warmer, and the Euro model is even colder than. Those temperatures I'm currently reflecting in my seven day forecast. So we could see some very cold air coming in shortly before Christmas. 32, ooh, brr. For a yeah. high temperature, not a low temperature. <laughs> All right, our kid caster. I guess that kid caster has the work cut out for him then. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he, yeah, this kid came in. He was well dressed and of uh, course. He, he did a really good job. So, of course, let's take a look. This is your Kid Caster segment for this week. So, what's your name, buddy? Isaiah. How old are you? Ten. So, are you from Louisiana or are you from Ohio? Ohio. Ohio, that's really cool. Are you liking Louisiana? Yes, yeah, way better than Ohio. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So, what do you like to do for fun? Well, around here or in Ohio? Both. Oh, I like to play with my friends here and visit them sometimes. Okay. And I like to, and I play sports in Ohio, like basketball. Mm -hmm. My favorite sport to do. That's awesome. So, are you ready to do the forecast? Sure. All right. So, get right here by my shoe and uh, look at this TV over here and read off the graphics starting with Saturday morning. Morning, we got 46, a little bit chilly. Noon, we got 50 degrees. Shower is possible. In the evening, 49 degrees, mostly cloudy. Okay. And this is the forecast for the next four days. Go ahead and read it off. Saturday, we got 52 degrees. 
cloudy and cool. Sunday we got sunny and cool. Monday we got cloudy and sh showers. And Tuesday we got cloudy and rain. All right, great job, man. Get right back in the middle here. If you want to be on KidCaster, just go to KLFY.com and sign up your child under the contest page. So look at this camera right here and wave bye to everyone. Bye. So I'm not mad at him. I like his style. I'm telling you, I, yeah. I like that individuality. Yeah. I do. I mean, he got on the red like I got on the red. Yeah. He had the Christmas gear on, the tie. Uh -huh. He was uh -huh. really sharply dressed. And he's from Ohio. Oh, he's from Ohio. Yeah, no we're wonder. Going, we're going national now. <laughs> We thank you for that. <laughs> All right, coming up here on Pond Spot 2, we'll show you another great light display at an Acadiana home. How you can get your yard featured with nearly a week left until Christmas? Oh my goodness. Once again, good morning to you, Acadiana.